Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here, Sunday, June 10th, 2018, Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. Feeling better today. The throat's still kind of itchy at times, so I've got the trusty Fiji water in case I need it from time to time. I don't know how people in broadcast, radio especially, do it when you have to be on the air for hours at a time and you've got a head cold. I'd be calling in. All right, let's get rid of me and move on to the first stop on our tour today. The GOES 16 full disc view, African dust in the tropical Atlantic. Maybe a little vorticity signature starting to show up here. We'll get to that in a moment. There is Tropical Storm Bud. And then we have the remnants of Aletta. Quick water break. Throat's kind of itchy today more than anything. Yesterday it was downright painful. So there's a letter dying away, there's Bud, and the main thing that I'm worried about with Bud here is it tracks up towards the Baja, is the transport of a lot of moisture up into the southwest U.S. and, of course, northwest Mexico. Not to mention that, you know, this will have direct impacts here on the Baja Peninsula proper, Cabo San Lucas, and vicinity heavy rain going to spread up through this area, and certainly the possibility of some swells coming out ahead once this becomes a hurricane especially. So that'll be good for surfers, but be careful out there along the beaches with those big breaking waves, especially when we look at the intensity guidance here indicating this will probably become a Category 3. Hey, wouldn't surprise me if it gets even stronger than that. You know, why not? Aletta did it. Here's the track guidance, generally the envelope right up here towards the southern Baja Peninsula. These others out here are outliers. So the general guidance envelope indicating that this will be of direct influence to the Baja Peninsula and then of course a lot of that moisture will stream up across this region and of course you've got desert conditions up here desert terrain and geography and when you bring tropical moisture into that area that can be a big problem on the GOES 16 sort of what, what sector is this I guess the US shot the CONUS shot even here you can see the outer bands of bud just coming into view and again my big concern will be this moisture that starts to track up through here over the next few days there's going to be a trough that digs in to the west and that will induce a turn to the north with this and the upper level flow will stream from the south and bring a lot of that moisture into the southwest US so you folks in Tucson and Phoenix get ready for an increase in moisture Maybe some thunderstorms, some of those thunderstorms being high based, that can be a big problem. Those high based thunderstorms, of course, can create lightning strikes without a lot of rainfall associated with it. And then the risk of flash flooding as well. I tell you this often, and you know, you folks even in the southwest, you do have to deal with tropical cyclone remnants from time to time. So just a quick reminder, be sure to use weather.gov, weather.gov. Put in your zip code and read any hazardous weather outlooks or anything related to uh, what might be happening with an increase in moisture next week into next weekend as the remnants, and that's what it will be, fortunately, for the Baja, a dying tropical storm, but that will bring a lot of moisture up towards your area, so just be on the lookout for that. All right, weather.gov, put in that zip code and read about this because, you know, that's a decent amount of um, QPF, quantitative precipitation forecast, showing a pretty good surge of moisture for that region. And speaking of that, I'm going to get a drink. Ah, yes, much better. <clears throat> Almost done with this cold. So let's move along to the guidance here, starting at the beginning. It snuck away from me. The 850 millibar field of the eastern Pacific, there's California and parts of uh, Oregon as well. Didn't want to leave you out. Gulf of California, the western coast of Mexico. All right, so we got our bearings. There's Florida. Kind of come around here. It's like Bob Ross. You know, pretty little continent there. All right, <clears throat> I'm trying. <laughs> there's Aletta. There's Bud. And these are the vorticity signatures. And as I put this into motion, watch how Bud continues to die away. Speaking of dying away, I'll take away the telestration. And then here comes Bud really increasing in its vorticity signature. 
very round in its appearance. You hear me talk about that often. <coughs> Excuse me. Horrible. It is better than yesterday, trust me. Um, very round in its appearance, and so that shows a very healthy tropical cyclone as it approaches Cabo San Lucas and vicinity at about day five. So let's stop this, go to the last frame and kind of analyze what's what. Real close to the southern Baja. Now this doesn't show the moisture fetch itself. We'll get into that uh, next week as this progresses. But I'm going to emphasize again, northwest Mexico, southwest New Mexico, and a good deal of southeast Arizona. This could be problematic. Not widespread, but enough that flash flooding, high base thunderstorms especially with the lightning strikes, problematic. All right, so pay attention to this and be ready to act if you need to. Now, even on the East Pacific shot, of course, you get a glimpse over here as to what's happening in the Western Caribbean and the Gulf. So let's just slide over there, and we'll put this into motion. This goes out to day five as well, and here's Bud moving out of the way. And you notice our flow coming across here in the first couple of days. Pretty straightforward east to west, and then you get these little pieces of energy that are breaking off. Trying to come north, the flow changes. You get a little bit of a westerly component. Watch, it's getting ready to happen right in here. And you get this sort of monsoon trough that develops. See that right there? Curls up, coming out of the east pack. And then the GFS just takes off with it, as you have seen over and over for the last 12 to 13 days. The global forecast system really getting aggressive with developing that energy uh, and this is day five really not much there a piece of energy here another weak vorticity signature there in the southern gulf uh, <coughs> what will it become hard to say but we will look at a couple of things that may give us a couple of clues here in just a moment the bottom line as we talked about yesterday this one model seems to have an issue early and late in the season at overdeveloping systems in this part of the world. Because I was trying to think about this, I was asking myself this, why should we discount the GFS showing a hurricane, you know, just somewhere up in this vicinity in six or seven days when we're not discounting that it'll have a hurricane from Bud you know what I mean? It's like, why is this right, but whatever happens out of this up here, why is that going to be wrong? And I really don't know. I'd have to ask somebody that, oops, I don't know why I went. What happened? Let's just do that. I'd have to ask somebody that works for uh, the INSEP, uh, National Centers for Environmental Prediction. I don't know why it just went backwards on me, but that's okay. Um, what's the model physics in this and why is it doing that because you see bud over here very well defined in the model field you know maybe it's the genesis part that it, it if it doesn't get this part right then you can't trust anything else downstream from there i don't know but you know as i was saying yesterday you folks up here especially along the texas coast and uh, areas just inland you know you got that anxiety from harvey last year and i get that the one thing, though, that I want to caution you, there's people that are saying not going to happen, and we talked about that for Alberto, that you never say never, and you never say anything's going to happen for a certainty. There's always room for error, okay? That's how statistics work. Um, as they say, there's only a few things that are certain, <clears throat> and you already know what those are. But the weather is almost never going to be certain. Uh, sometimes it can be close to 100%, and sometimes close to 0%. But unless you are at zero or at 100, there's no such thing, all right? And so, you know, for people to say, well, there's nothing that's going to happen, um, I want to show you this, the MJO. And the Madden-Julian Oscillation is our area in, you know, where we look at the sort of the fertility of the tropics. And right now, the GFS indicating it's in the null phase right here. Not much discernible MJO activity anywhere around the globe. And quite simply, this is a favorable period of upward motion in the atmosphere across the tropics. And it can be tracked and uh, 
analyzed in a lot of different ways and this is the past over here and it goes through these different phases and typically the phases for the Atlantic Basin Western Hemisphere are 8, 1, and 2 as you can see here. Maritime Continent and Eastern Pacific 5, 6, and 7. And the more amplified this is, as an example, if we saw this way out here like this where the forecast was way out here we would expect extreme typhoon activity in the Western Pacific or if it was extremely amplified you know coming out of the West Pack over into phases 8 and 1 and 2 we would expect there to be a lot of activity in the Atlantic Basin it has varying degrees of intensity alright it's hard to explain the whole phenomenon one day I am gonna pull in an expert on this I'm gonna see if Dr. Michael Ventress from WSI will come on and we'll do like a FaceTime thing. I'm working on uh, all that. We're going to have some cool things this year. So anyway, this is the um, the, uh, the GFS and its ensembles, and the European is closely matching. And what does it show? Again, in the null phase now, heading over and reamplifying to some degree into phases one and two. Those are the phases that enhance the possibility of development in the Western Hemisphere. And guess what? The Western Hemisphere is where a lot of us live. So, bottom line, in terms of what may or may not happen in the Gulf of Mexico, it's hurricane season, you should be paying attention anyway. Looking at one snapshot of deterministic models, whether it be the European that shows very little, or the GFS that shows the other extreme with the potential of a hurricane coming, try to think of it down the middle, or even if you want to, maybe slightly less than the middle, that maybe just maybe there could be some type of tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico, the Western Gulf, next weekend. Maybe. Why hasn't the National Hurricane Center issued an outlook about it yet? Well, as I just showed you on the uh, inset model, did I get rid of it? No, I didn't. Even here on day five, this is five days out, and remember their outlook goes out to five days now. There's nothing even on the American model here, the GFS, that indicates development. So there shouldn't be anything issued in the tropical weather outlook just yet and when it comes time if it comes time you can rest assured there will be all right so don't get too upset or worried or anything about anything developing in the Gulf just yet but keep in mind I do want to caution you even if it's a depression or a tropical storm remember tropical storm bill I think that was in 2015 Allison in 2001 we gotta make sure that oh it might not be a hurricane true you can eliminate most of the surge and wind issues if it's not a hurricane but if it's just a tropical storm well let me remind you that Harvey when it dumped all that rain on interior Texas that was just a tropical storm a former category 4 hurricane so definitely need to watch the region because the pattern does suggest a more favorable period coming up but it's to what degree we get development don't sweat that right now because I mean what are you gonna do even if you knew for sure you know that a category 2 hurricane was coming into some area you can't move your house I mean I guess you could help prepare a little bit better but for most of us it just makes you anxious and makes you worry and you lose sleep and then you get tired and you get sick like me and you don't want to end up like me because that's my job is to worry about this and watch it obsessively so you don't have to alright so don't sweat the small stuff. We'll wait and see how things shake out over the coming week, and we will go from there. All right? I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I do appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking through this summertime cold with me. I think I'll be a lot better tomorrow. I made a lot of progress for today. And another eight hours of sleep tonight will help a lot. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.